This car has, you know, it's a 27 year old car. It had some factory tint. It maybe had some aftermarket tint. I'm not sure. But it's peeled off and it's left behind this gluey residue. This is the case here, as well as on the back hatch, the tint is still, is still there, but, but flaking off and leaving this gluey residue behind. So I'm gonna show you how I get rid of it. There's a lot of different videos on the internet about this, a lot of different processes from use Goo Gone, Easy Off, a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of things that people suggest to try to dissolve or get rid of this adhesive, this little, this, this residue. Uh, it's not that complicated, guys. This is actually quite simple. And um, like people really overcomplicate solutions on the internet. Some soap and water, mostly for a lubricant, but it does soften the glue a little bit. This is just like hand soap mixed in. I think like a Dawn dish soap or something like that would actually work a little better, but this works fine. And one of these razor blade scrapers. Uh, you don't need this fancy one with a screwdriver handle and all that. It does help for leverage. You can kind of get your thumb in here, but you can use with a regular small window scraper like you'd have for your house. So I'm gonna work in a relatively I kind of, I didn't mean to spray over there. I want to work, stay in a small section here. And, uh, and you just give it a nice scrape. Now you want to kind of go with the contour. There's my rig. Contour of your glass. So I got started sideways there and you can see how it missed in the middle right here. So it got out here and got out here, but not here. That's because the glass is curved this way and the blade is straight. So try to follow the straightest line you can with your glass. And that'll make it go the fastest. It'll still work, it'll just take longer because you're not, you're not getting as much real estate with your scraper. helps if the door doesn't move on you. So again, I'm going a little bit of an angle here because it is curved this way and this way. It's kind of, it's not spherical, but it's multi-dimension, multi-dimensional curvature. That sounded like big words. So I found that going at a bit of a angle gets me again, just trying to get the most use of the blade. It's not, any other fancy best practice type suggestion. It's just so that I have to scrape less. And I do periodically clean off the blade and the window so this goo doesn't get all over the place. Gross. So you can see where you missed, like right there. Now your glass is harder than the razor blade, so you're not, you won't hurt your glass. Let's get that a little bit. There it goes, see, that's the difference in dry and wet. Dry, it was kind of not wanting to come off. As soon as I give it with a little soap, it just, Scrapes right off. That's where things get a little sketchy here when you get to the lettering. But if I gotta take the lettering off, I gotta take the lettering off. Doesn't matter. Nope, doesn't even take the lettering off. Perfect. I get it all. This well, window's so dirty, it's hard to tell. <laughs> Probably should wash the window while I'm at it. And that's pretty much it. Five minutes, 10 minutes. Now the back hatch is a bigger piece of glass and that one's gonna be different because it's got the rear defroster on it. So we'll attack that one here next. It's pretty simple. It's not that hard. And now we have a nice clean piece of glass.
If, however, it's on the rear window and you've got a rear defroster, you gotta be real careful because those can be easily damaged. So you don't wanna be go scraping on there with a razor blade because you're gonna cut through those wires. Likewise, you gotta be careful about strong chemicals because it can damage the adhesive for them and maybe damage the wire itself. With this one is do it with steam. I've got some plastic down. This steamer can be, well, messy. It's gonna put on a lot of, you know, steam is just water, it's water vapor. So eventually it's gonna condense into the water and it's gonna drip. So I'm trying to keep as much off the interior as I can. It's not fast, but it is working. I hope you can see it, it's starting to peel right here. A little brush on the end of this, it helps. But... That's a hot job. It is, it is warm today. In a seat, the bag is killing me. Well, so it's taking it off, but it's not taking the glue off. Boy, it does kind of scratch the plastic though. That's weird. I wouldn't have thought that with these. Plastic All right, so I'm trying a different steamer. This uh, that Bissell spot steamer, it was just a little too focused. This gets a broader, more, I don't know, it just seems to be working better. This is a clothing steamer that I brought from my mom. Thanks, mom. It is not getting the glue off as well as the other one did, but it is, um, the glue comes off with a little bit of a wipe so if you get it hot this spot here i don't know if you can really see that but there's a little spot right here where it just still while i was steaming it just wipe it with a towel and the adhesive comes off so even though it's a little more work i should do this twice one to get the film off and then the other to get the glue off easier if i could crawl in here and just do it but then i'm dripping hot water all over me and i don't feel like doing that either we'll keep going here and try this spot oh it is hot Okay, so don't overfill, otherwise it boils out and all over your hand. It's lovely. This is a pretty cheap steamer. I think we got it when we were here on vacation. And just kind of like five or ten dollar El Cheapo steamer. So maybe a better steamer would work better. I don't know what's happening. It was tinted. Was this tinted twice? What am I looking at here? There's a film and then another film. I don't have any idea what is happening here. You tint guys out here. If there's any on my channel. You like knowledgeable tint guys. It looks like there's two layers of tint here. If you look over in that ends over there, part of it peeled off when I peeled the the film off that I was that was cracked. So did they tint over top? Did somebody tint over top of another tint? Is that normal? I've never tinted a car before. I've had cars tinted, but I've never done it. Is it normal to tint over factory tint? Or do they typically peel the factory one off and replace it with something new? And if not, if that's if that's not typical, the tint over top, is that why it didn't stick? 
Or is it just age? Is it all this normal? And it's just, you know, hot sun and parked outside and it just happens over time. I'm curious. Let me know. I'd like to learn about this stuff. The whole thing's a mess. So I'm gonna take everything off. This is that inner layer of tint, film, and that's clear glass behind it. There we go, that's what I expected it to be like. So it must be the double layer of tint that was messing me up. So if you're just trying to remove a first one layer of tint on glass, this works. This works really well. This is just peeling, which is basically almost falling. Man, this just goes through water like crazy. This has still got to come off, but this is coming off pretty easily. Now, I should have done this. I should have taken the whole thing off to begin with. It would have made my life a lot easier than trying to save one layer of tint and peel off the other. Yeah, I think I said this earlier and I stopped doing it. I think steaming ahead, ooh, <laughs> falling down, not ideal. Steaming ahead of where you're going instead of behind works better. Yeah, it's like it's gonna fall on its own. Yeah, that works a lot better. I'm not really pulling, it's just kind of the weight of my hand. See how much clearer that glass is versus this film. So film over film again for you, you tint guys. Is that normal? Do they tint over top of the factory tint, or do you peel the factory tint off and put new tint on? In this case, it looks like they tinted over the factory tint, and apparently, tint peeling off of tint does not go very well so if I could have got underneath this original one and at one point I did and then I was trying to save it I should have should have just peeled it off this is going so much easier which is funny because I signed I've done this before this is how it's supposed to go and it was not going very well and I was confused Tint removed. 
<sighs> well, okay. The glass is clean. Well, it's, it's cleanish. Still needs to be clean, clean. There's still some little bit of residual uh, residue on there around the, the defrost wires. Uh, that's scrubbing off with a, with a rag okay. So I'm gonna clean all this up, get rid of all the water, and then just use some glass cleaner. And uh, that seems to, to clean that up pretty well. So that's not a big deal. That's just cleaning glass, just like any other time. As far as the tint goes, a couple things. I, again, uh, you know, you, all you tint experts out there, I would love to hear, comment down below what you, what, what, what the deal is. Um, I, do you tint over other tint? Do you peel the factory tint off before you put new tint on? When somebody brings a car into you to have darker tint put on it? Or is this one of those like, you know, some Yahoo in his garage decided to tint the car and uh, just put the tint over top of the other tint? Like bought some tint from Walmart? I don't know. Uh, tint coming off of tint is rather difficult, it seems. I, I had a hard time with it. I have pulled tint off windows before. And that the end of that where it just peeled off nice and smooth with the steam, that's how I've done it. And it's always worked just like that did. Peeling one layer off the other, I've never done that before. And that doesn't go very well. That's really hard to do. And I should have just peeled the whole thing off and been done with it. I was just trying to get rid of the messy stuff. And I really created way too much work for myself. So learn from that, right? Don't do what I did. Just peel off the tint with the whole thing down to the glass because the glass you can clean glass is hard cleans much easier when you're trying to scrub that residue off that other tint it was uh it was scratching all up that's the other thing about the tints is is like cheap aftermarket tint have a lot of glue on it is that why it left so much residue behind or does all tint do that because the factory tint didn't do that so or was it just because it was you know a membrane on top of a membrane you know what i don't know i'd love to hear from you guys who are smarter than me about this stuff and, and let me know, because uh, I'd love to learn. Uh, if you've got tint to remove, if you've got it on your side windows or windshield or wherever where you don't have this defroster on it, you can just scrape it off with a razor blade. If, if you have tint on, you want to remove it, then you can do it with, just like I did with this steam. You don't need any super harsh chemicals. You don't need, I've heard guys talk about oven cleaner and gasoline, and, I mean, Guys, it, this was a lot of work and it's hot today and playing with steam on a hot day, I'm a sweaty mess, but physical effort wise, it's not that much effort, right? You just take your time. It's just a bit, gotta have some patience and uh, it'll peel right off. Thanks for watching. Uh, that's about it on this car for a while. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Maybe I'll sell it. I'm kind of, I don't know. It's been two years on this and on one hand, I'm like, I wanna see the fruits of my labor, but on the other hand, I'm kind of over this car. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see. We'll see what we do with it. But thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoy all the stuff with the Firebird. Um, new project coming here pretty soon. Don't know what it is yet, but looking forward to it. It'd be exciting to find out. Hopefully see you guys then. Thanks.